calls for the resignation of Michigan State's Board of Trustees reaches a fever pitch. The seven investigators uncovering the past work of one trustee that has some wondering if he's the best the man job for the job there. He says he'll fight for survivors of sex abuse, but he's fought against them in the past. Seven investigator Ross Jones has the surprising court records that has victims fuming. They were not paying attention to survivors. Morgan McCall can't forget the silence she heard from MSU's Board of Trustees. What they didn't say for more than a year as the Nasser sex abuse scandal grew. But this story is about what one trustee has said and done in courtrooms throughout Michigan. Trustee Dan Kelly's bio touts 25 years experience representing school districts as an attorney. What it doesn't mention, that in many of those civil cases, he was defending schools accused of turning a blind eye to pedophiles. Interestingly, Kelly was elected to MSU's board just after the Nasser scandal broke. He has represented districts like Roseville, Dundee, and at least four times Warren. That's where James Kearley molested three elementary-aged girls. Kearley was a gym teacher with more than a decade of documented fondling inside the district that got him moved from school to school, but didn't get him fired. He touched my private, Mr. K, sometimes in the gym and sometimes in the office. In court, Kelly argued the district couldn't be held responsible for Kearley's actions, and while there was no excuse for what the teacher did, Kelly told jurors the touching was always on the outside of the clothing, was very brief, and there's strong evidence that the girls didn't know that it was inappropriate when it occurred. We shared Kelly's words with Morgan McCall. I think that's gross. What you just read is gross. When this is a leader and essentially the architect of campus climate, I don't know how you can send your kids. To Michigan State University and feel safe. In 2006, Kelly defended a district accused of ignoring allegations that teacher Roderick Reese molested 11 elementary school girls. As is common in sex abuse cases, the plaintiffs filed their lawsuits as Jane Doe's. But Kelly filed a motion to have their names made public, saying that the case had already been tried in the press. We spoke with a parent of one of Reese's victims, who was 12 when Kelly wanted her name revealed. It was kind of like, who's on trial here, okay? It's not my, my kid or the other parent's children. The judge denied Kelly's motion. The case settled for an undisclosed amount, and in a criminal trial, Reese was convicted of child molestation. 12 years later, the father of Reese's victim hasn't forgotten what Dan Kelly tried to do in court. Well, I was totally stunned. Why would he want to do this to these children? They didn't do anything wrong. In a January board meeting, Kelly apologized to Nasser survivors and said until recently, he had viewed the Nasser scandal through the eyes of a lawyer. In the back of my mind, I thought that this would be resolved in the litigation process. I actually think he viewed them as the opposition, not survivors. Attorney Mick Graywall represents more than 80 of Nasser's abuse victims. It's clear to me that he's not the right guy. It's actually clear to me that everybody on the board is not the right guy or woman. Dan Kelly declined an on-camera interview, but by phone told me he believes he can be the best advocate for victims of Nasser's abuse. Those that have faced him in the courtroom aren't so sure. I don't think he's out to protect the victims myself. And being a defense lawyer, why would he? He's out to protect the people he's defending. After our phone call, Trustee Kelly released a statement that said in part, each board member brings their experience and background from their past that will help the university and survivors move forward. Because of the confidential nature of my work as a private sector attorney and my role as an MSU trustee, it would be inappropriate for me to comment any further. Wow. Okay, Ross, so there have been calls for the board to resign. Obviously, there are calls for Kelly to resign. So when are we going to hear from the board, and are they going to listen to any of these calls? Very good question. Good news is we don't have to wait long. Their next meeting is tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. We will be there. It will be live on our Facebook page. I'd be shocked if any of these folks resign anytime soon. They have certainly, uh, their posture has been that they want to stay and try to fix this. The big question from victims is, are you the right people? Can you actually do it? All right, Ross Jones, thank you for the reporting. We'll see you tomorrow morning. That'll be interesting. That's right.